devotees of uh, our uh, congregation. So I, I'm sure uh, all of you all uh, who was assembled here uh, via this uh, media uh, would know better than me. And uh, of course, I, at the end of the session, I would request you to add in in case you have anything that I have missed out. And I require, I really need uh, everybody's blessing so I can speak um, as per the desire of Guru and Gauranga. So having said that, I would just uh, quickly uh, start the class by reciting uh, or offering my dandavats and also doing some small little prayer. So, Om Agyana Timirandasya, Gyanan Jana Shalakya, Chakshurum Mile Umnitam Yena, Tasme Shri Guru Vaira Maha. Shri Chaitanya Manobhishtam, Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Swaya Rupa, Swayam Rupa, Adamayam, Dadati, So Padantkida. One day, Ham Shri Guru, uh, Shri Yutapada Kamaram, Shri Guru Vaishnu Mancha, Shri Rupam Sagrajatam, Sahagana Raghunatam Vitantam, Tam Swam Swajuram, Tadvaitam Savadhutam Parijana, Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna Padam, Sri Sagana Larida, Sri Vishaka Amvitamcha, E Krishna Karuna Sindhu, Dinavandu Jagatpate, Kopesha Kopika Kanta, Radha Kanta Namasuti, Tapta Kanjana Gaurangi, Radhe Vrindavaneshwari, Vishubhanu, Vishubhanu Sute Devi, Pranamami, Haripi. Vancha Kalpaturu Vaishya Krupa Sindhu Bhevacha Paritanam Pavanebhyo Vaishnavebhyo Namaha Namam Vishnu Badaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Shrimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namne Namaste Saraswati Deve Gaurvani Pracharne Nirvijayasya Shidnivadi Ashatta Deshitarane Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabho Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhar Shpasati Gaurav Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram 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 Hare Hare Ram Vishnu Dhan So before I start I am sure everybody could hear me you can unmute and you can say whether you yes, can Prabhupada. hear me or you can't hear me Thank you Prabhupada. We can hear you we can hear you loud and clear Fantastic that's amazing. All right, so we're going to talk about Swayam Bhuva Manu. <clears throat> Anybody knows about it? You can keep your skippers, speakers unmute, uh, unmute because I would like to have the class uh, very interactive. I would not like to speak. But yes, you, you can do one thing. You can ask the questions of yours at the end of the session. All right. Anybody knows uh, who is Swayam, Swayam Bhuva Manu? He's yeah. the first Manusha. Swayam Bhuva Manusha. The first Manusha. Yeah, Swambhu Manu, Manu was uh, Bra uh, Lord Brahma's uh, son, and uh, through uh, actually through him, how the uh, the the human race actually started is what I understand. Fantastic, very good, very good, Fantastic. I think he's the Manu of this Kalpa. Okay, very good, excellent. Any other understanding that we have here across the board? No. Okay. Great. So let's move on. So when there is, whenever there is a silent, I will, I will just I will feel that there is the answer is no or answer uh, or maybe the, if I'm asking the question, that means the answer is yes, and everybody knows the answer. So I will move on. All right. We only have maximum, um, as per the time, 43 minutes. So I need to finish this in 43 minutes. So let's see how it goes. And in case if I need more, I will beg some extra minutes from you. So you can definitely offer those minutes in my in my time. Great. So moving forward, Swayambhur Manu, uh, as rightly mentioned by one of the Prabhuji's, is is a son of Brahma. Now, Brahma created ten rishis, uh, or rather, you can say ten son Manasputra, or you can say uh, rishis. Do you know who are the, who are these rishis? Okay, the answer is no. So Marichi, Atri, Angira, uh, Pulastya, Pula, Pritu, Brigo, Brigu, Vashishta, Daksha, and Narada. These were all Rishis. And he also created four Kumaras. We have also heard about four Kumaras in past. Uh, do you know uh, the names of these four Kumaras? Anybody? Sanat, Sanat, uh, okay. Sa Sanat, uh, Samanand, uh, okay. uh, and Sanatana. Sanatana. 
very good very good prabhu ji you're doing great so sanak sanatana sana sana sanandana and sanatana okay great so now uh, so brahma has created this four kumaras why they have why he has created this four kumaras any anybody to take the human generation forward yeah. fantastic and what happened then they decided they not to liberation not to, they decided to go in with tapasya and uh, stay as children and not to uh, not to indulge into the material world the human and the, and the, the very yeah. good and then uh, they uh, they, uh, they 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 obeyed brahma yes so while brahma was contemplating on on the creation uh, he was he was taking a break and he was just thinking uh, how am i going to create the uh, the humans or manushyas so while he was doing that from his body there were two personalities stop chappal sound hard Yeah, we can talk about chapel little later on so let's talk about um, the uh, the brahma so he has created two personalities so one one uh, one was swayambhuva manu and other one was shatrupa swayambhuva manu and shatrupa was created these two personalities was created by brahma now why swayambhuva why brahma created two any any guesses Uh, for uh, yeah. manu was in the male form and satrupa was in female form female, female form. form for the right. creation of people super very good very good so um when by the way if you see they were they, uh, if you if you think from a uh, materialistic point of view they both are brothers and sisters but when it comes to the uh, spiritual point of view The, the, this particular rule doesn't uh, it, it it is not this particular rule is not for the spiritual in us people on a spiritual platform because at that moment the reason this uh, this two personalities were created so that they can definitely uh, create the rest of the other uh, generations of human being and when it's when you call swayambhu manu let's understand this uh, the meaning of the swayambhu manu swayambhu is basically some swayambhu which has come which is without any sex intercourse number 1 number 2 manu manu is the is a is a, is a origin form of manushya or is a latin word you can say of a man and he was the first manushya that was created by brahma so far so good that more so um similarly at the same time saraswati mata was also created do you know how saraswati uh, god saraswati was created or came into existence she came into existence from the tongue of brahmadev so if you see uh, from a materialistic point of view saraswati is supposed to be a daughter am i correct yes. however <laughs> however what happened um when saraswati was born she was very very beautiful very beautiful so brahmadev she has given so saraswati mata came and then uh, she was little bewildered what am i doing uh, what am i going to do what is my future so like we have a career goals in materialistic point of view or when we think from a corporate point of view Similarly, Saraswati Mata also thought, "Okay, what's my career here?" And then uh, Brahma Dev uh, gave her a three individual development plan. Like you will take care, you will be, you will, you will become a form of a river. That is Mata Saraswati River. Uh, you will be a god of of speech, uh, of, and also art, and you will you will always stay on the tip of the tongue of jnanis or yogis and scholars. and the last was you will be my concert and she was bewildered i am I, you just created me and i'm like your daughter and now you are thinking you are telling me that i'm you want me to be your concert so she was not very comfortable with that however a lot uh, when brahma was extremely extremely 
uh, infatuated uh, from her beauty and so on. So Saraswati Mata went on the left side. So Brahmadev again was a very exalted. So he did not find it very polite for her him to you know stare at her and keep staring at her and whenever she is moving from one place to another. And hence the, he uh, this the second head was formed on the uh, left hand side. And then she moved on the right hand side because she was un uncomfortable because the way she was here, Brahmade was looking at her. And then uh, the, the head on the uh, left hand side, right hand side formed. And then <laughs> she moved at the back and another, another head was formed. And then she jumped uh, on top or rather she moved up and then another head was formed. But looking at this, uh, Shiva was not very comfortable. He, was, he became very angry and he chopped off one head of Brahmadev. Do you know that Brahmadev was having five heads before? Yes, Prabhu. Good. So it was. It was. It got chopped off by uh, Shiva. And when it got chopped off, Brahmadev came into his in, in his being, and then he, he was just thinking, "Oh my God, what did I do?" And then he realized the calm, the calm Dev, which was prepared by created by him, was there inside. He he just get in got inside Brahmadev, and because of which he had this particular feelings. And hence, uh, he cursed calm Dev. He cursed Kamde that you will uh, you will you will definitely uh, be burned in ashes, and I believe we all know the story about uh, how he was burned in ashes by Shiva. But during this time, Brahmadev was cursed by Saraswati. Do you know what was the curse? Anybody? I guess that he will not be prayed. I mean, people will not pray for Brahmadev. There won't be any temple of Brahmadev, and he won't he won't be worshipped. Exactly. Very good, very good. So, uh, but up, after that, Brahmadev uh, performed a lot of penance uh, to pacify Mata Saraswati and then Saraswati Mata became the consort of Brahmadev. So, um, here, uh, again, Manu was a great Kshatriya. So, like, coming back to Manu, Dev, Manu, uh, Swayambhu Manu, he was a great, great Kshatriya. And uh, and Brahma was a Brahmana. So Brahma, Brahma expressed his desire, uh, the reason why uh, he created Manu. And uh, Manu was obliged to follow the instructions of his father. And uh, after hearing that, uh, Brahma Dev was <laughs> extremely, extremely happy with that. And he became an ideal, uh, ideal son of an ideal father. So um if you see manu was one of the very special grahastha very very special grahastha um let's discuss about manu a bit so you see the the the, the man was swayambhu manu and uh, as as we have mentioned the the, the woman was named as uh, shatrupa uh, humans are descended from manu that is the reason they are known as Manavas, as we have discussed earlier. Lord Brahma was completely exhausted uh, and, and because of which Manu came into being and he helped uh, uh, Brahma so that definitely he can create more and more generations. So the first Manu was Swayambhava Manu. He had uh, three, do uh, three daughters and two sons. Then the name of the daughters was Akuti, uh, Devuti, and Prasuti. And the son was Priyavrata and Uttanapa. Tempura Manu had uh, this, these two sons, Priyavrata and Uttanapa, were very, very powerful kings, and their sons and grandsons spread all over the three worlds during that period. Now, uh, talking about Dev Devahuti, Devuti was given in a marriage to Sage. Uh, Kardama and she gave birth to the nine daughters and a single son called Kapila and we're going to definitely talk about uh, Kapila soon he is one of the Mahajana Prasuti the second daughter gave birth to Yadnya and Akuti the third daughter gave birth to one son and one daughter both Kapila and Yadnya uh, who were 
sons of Devuti and Prasuti respectively were incarnation of Vishnu, as I mentioned to you earlier. Swayamhuva Manu, along with his wife, uh, Shaturupa, went into forest to practice austerities on the bank of river Sunanda. And at the same time, Rakshasas attacked them. But Yajna, who was Yajna? Uh, Yajna was... Yajna was? His daughter, his daughter. Yerne was the son. Prasuti, son of Prasuti. Prasuti's, Prasuti's son. And uh, he was the incarnation of? Vishnu. Fantastic. So accompanied by his sons, the demigods swiftly killed them. And then Yerne personally took the post of Indra, the king of heavenly planets. So we are talking about, so Yerne took, uh, Yerne took the post of Indra. So Indra? Indra is a, is a king of demigods, right? Yes. So anybody can take his post. How can we understand this? Who can explain me? Yeah, this is basically based on your, uh, not, uh, I mean, uh, based on the karmas, uh, uh, you, you would get uh, elevated uh, uh, to the post of Indra. And then, yes, mm -hmm. of course, I mean, apart from that, there are various other eligibility criteria, basically like, uh, uh, like as we heard yesterday, we need to have the hundred Ashwamedh Yags uh, Punya with you, subsequent to which you become the you come to the post of Lord Indra. Very, very good, excellent, fantastic. So, are you all with me so far? So good. Any any questions? Uh, any thoughts? Shall we move yes, on? Have a, Everybody, have a question. Yes, please. So we discussed that Manu was the first Manusha. Mm -hmm. But then at the same time, uh, there were other rishis like Kadam Rishi and so on and so forth uh, to whom he married his daughters. So my question mm -hmm. is that if Manu was the first Manushya, then where did Kadam came from? Fantastic. That's a, that's a very, very good question. I'm going to answer this at the end of the class. Is that okay? Yes. Yes, Prabhuji. Super. Very good. But just to give you understanding, uh, there were others, other sons. This was the first Manushya. But there were other sons as well, like Daksha and rest of the other Prajapatis. And uh, there, were, there were other sons of Brahma, through which uh, rest of the other generations was, 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 was made. Just to give you the, the understanding in a short form, but I'll, I, I, if, if the time permits, I can explain to you in detail a little later on. Okay. May I? All right, good. So... Um, so we talked about the family of Swayambhu Manu. Now, Swayambhu Manu, uh, what was his lifestyle? Let's understand that. Emperor Swayambhu Manu enjoyed his life with his wife and, and subject, that means his family members, and fulfilled his desires without being disturbed by unwanted principles contrary to the process of religion. Like, for example, it is understood that Emperor uh, Swayambhu Manu enjoyed his household life by following these principles. Uh, like, uh, the, the, the principles of rishis. He, it is stated here that early in the morning, there were musicians who used to sing uh, with musician, uh, musical instruments about the glories of the Lord and the emperor uh, with his family, personally used to hear about the past tense of the supreme person. He was always, always, uh, uh, you know, uh, deeply engaged in hearing the pastimes of the Lord. Always is to hear, inform or uh, have his servants talk about the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Now, this custom is still prevalent in India and in some of the royal families and temples, where professional musicians sing with with shainais and and sleeping uh, and the sleeping members of the house gradually wake up from their beds in a pleasing atmosphere. I don't know. Uh, this happens in most of the houses as well. During bedtime, also. Um, the, the singers sing songs in relationship with the past tense of the Lord um, and the householder gradually fall asleep remembering the, the glories of the Lord. In every house, in addition to the singing program, there's an arrangement of Bhagavatam lectures in the evening. Uh, in most of the villages, I don't know, uh, still in, in my village in Maharashtra, uh, still we have a lot of uh, spiritual classes that have been conducted in the evening, um, starting from 8 o'clock until 10, 30, 11 o'clock, and then everybody goes to sleep. So that's, that's the way, basically was the lifestyle of Swayambhu Manu. Uh, in a such a way that uh, he, was, he was perfect in Krishna consciousness. 
uh, this uh, he, and and as you know uh, swayamvo mono used to avail himself for this opportunity to uh, like live householder life in the peace and prosperity of a krishna conscious atmosphere all the time do you all know uh, when uh, let's talk about now bhagavad gita let's let's deviate uh, from swayamvo mono and come to bhagavad gita uh, who spoke bhagavad gita lord krishna to whom to to arjuna in mahabharat uh, but then he had spoken about gita before also to uh, to the sun god very good very good now how can we connect this uh, this uh, discussion of bhagavad gita uh, to sun god to manu can anybody explain yeah since manu was the f- uh um, since manu was the first uh, uh human mm-hmm. uh, in the human form um okay i mean everything descended from him everything very, very from him yeah sorry there is a uh, okay first of all um see bhagavad gita is it is just a message so this particular message was given by shri krishna to to various different personality it was given to um, you can say all the um, very very high high devo- high demigods uh, which is shiva which was brahma um, but when when we talk about the uh, the context the context message was different however the essence of the message was same like for example in uh, bhagavad gita um, 4.1 it's it's mentioned shri bhagwan uvacha imam vish uh, vishvate yogam proktavan aham avyayam vishwaswan manave praha manur ishvakave bravit which means the the personality of godhead a lord shri krishna said i instructed this imperishable science of yoga to the sun god vivaswan and vivaswan instructed it to manu who was who was manu the father of mankind and manu in turn instructed it to ishvaku anybody knows who is ishvaku ishvaku was uh, ishvaku was uh, uh, i mean uh, from that uh, he was uh, like uh, basically there was the uh, it was again divided into surya vanchi and chandra vanchi and ishvaku uh, uh, lord shri ram was in the same uh, if i could use the word uh, khandan dynasty from dynasty, dynasty sorry absolutely right. ishvaku's dynasty fantastic you are absolutely right so ishvaku was the founder of the surya vanchi dynasty to which ram belonged and the, and the uh, and as you all know there was he established it ram how ram tried to establish the ram rajya the kingdom of ram in the middle of uh, corrupt indian society so if you see as i mentioned to you uh, the message of bhagavad gita was contextual depending upon the time place and circumstances that was given to various different demigods uh, as well as uh, different personalities however the, the the essential the essence of the message was same so here in we find the history of bhagavad gita traced from a remote time so bhagavad gita was not only spoken to arjuna it was spoken to uh, uh, to vivaswan and vivaswan spoke the uh, bhagavad gita uh, to manu and manu in turn ishvaku so uh is is this is this science of krishna conscious so that people can make uh, take advantage of the great science and pursue as a successful path utilizing the opportunity of the human the human form of life that is the that is the reason the bhagavad gita was spoken so in this millennium the sun god is known as anybody this one this one fantastic vivaswan the king of the sun uh which is the origin of all planets within the solar system uh and the, the sun is the king of the planet 
and the sun god at present the name is vesuvius as you mentioned rules the sun planet which is controlling all the planets by supplying heat and light he is rotating around the, uh, under the order of krishna and lord krishna originally made vesuvius one his first disciple to understand the science of bhagavad gita the gita is not therefore a speculative treatise for the insignificant mundane scholar but it is a standard book of knowledge coming down from time immemorial and that is the reason we should definitely uh, recite or rather study every single shloka and the purport and practice them in our day to day life so we can trace out the history of the gita as follows i would like to give you little uh, understanding about the history in the beginning Uh, of the millennium known as treta yuga the science of the relationship with the supreme was delivered by vivas swan to manu manu being the father of mankind he gave it to the son maharaj ishwaku the and the, the king of this uh, earth planet and forefather of raghu dynasty as mentioned by amit prabhu so at the present moment we have just passed through 5000 years of the kali yuga which last Uh, 432,000 years. So before this, there was Dwapar Yuga. Do you know how many years uh, was the Dwapar Yuga of? Anybody? 432 into two. So it is. Twice the age of Kali Yuga. Fantastic! It is 800,000 years. Do you know what was the uh, the time frame of Treta Yuga? Anybody? Yeah, double of Dwapar Yuga and Treta Yuga was double of. Uh, straight i i mean the, the first yuga was the double of the add another 400 so it becomes yeah. 1200000 very good so thus uh, some you can you can say uh, around 2 lakh 5000 years ago manu spoke bhagavad gita to his disciple and and son maharaj ishwaku and the king of this uh, of this planet earth the age of the current manu is calculated to the last sum uh, which is uh, 305 i if i'm not wrong let me okay it's it's 305 million uh, billion million 3000 uh, years of which 120000 million 400000 have passed oh my god it's it's really very very big number <laughs> very big <laughs> so um accepting that birth the, the uh, accepting that before the birth of manu the gita was spoken by the lord to his disciple the sun god vivaswan a rough estimate is that the gita was spoken at least 120 million 4000 years ago and in the in human society it has uh, been extended for 2 million years so it was re-spoken by lord again to arjuna about 5000 years ago and that is a rough estimate of the history of of the gita according to the gita itself and according to the version of the speaker lord shri krishna it was spoken to the sun god vivaswan because he he is also a kshatriya and his father uh, father of all kshatriya were descendant of the sun god and suryavanshu kshatriya moving forward uh, the next incarnation any first of all before i could start this do you all know or would you like to know how many manus are there in brahma's life is it 12 my is question 12? is do you know how many how many manus are there in a brahma's life and for example what is the brahma's life 100 oh, oh okay okay kalpa i mean it's 100 kalpas very good Here in one hundred kalpas, how many manus are being transformed? Anybody? Uh, let, me, let me give you the question. Prabhu, to correct you, it is not hundred kalpas; it is one thousand kalpas because uh, one kalpa, one kalpa is combination of all the four yugas that that forms one kalpa, and then multiplied by thousand times becomes that is one day of Brahma. and similarly yes. uh, that many times is one night of brahma as well just to yes. Yes. thank you so much bro thank you thank so you. very much thank you very good so the next incarnation uh, so within one day's duration of the life of brahma there are 14 manus 
So therefore, there are 420 Manus in one month of Brahma. And 5,040 Manus in one year of Brahma. Brahma lives, uh, Brahma lives for 100 years of his age. And therefore, there are 5,040 into 100 or 104,000 Manus in the duration of Brahma's life. So there are innumerable universes uh, within one Brahma in each of them. And all of them are created and annihilated during the breathing time of uh, Purusha. Who, Purusha, who are we talking about? Mahavishnu. <laughs> Fantastic. Very good. Very good. So the, as we mentioned, there are 14 Manus appears in each Kalpa. And each such period of each Manu is called Manvantara. What is it called? Manvantara. Manvantara. So according to this calculation, the current world is in the stage, uh, in the stage called Vaivasvata, which is the seventh Manu of the Kalpa of the white boar, or you can, you can call it the Shwet Varha Kalpa. Anybody knows what are these 14 Manus of the current Kalpa? Any, any, anybody would like to try to name out the, the 14 uh, Manus of this Kalpa? Okay, so the first Manu is Vayambhava Manu. He is, a he is a direct son of Brahma. The second Manu is Swarosisa. Uh, is a son of predominating deity of fire. The third Manu is Uttama, and he is the son of King Priyavrata. The fourth Manu is Tamasa, is the brother of Uttama, and is the fifth Manu, Raivata. The sixth Manu is Chakshu Sa, and he is the son of Chakshu. The seventh Manu is Vaivasvata, and he is the son of the sun god. The eighth Manu is Savarni. And he is the also, also a son uh, of the uh, sun. Nine one is called as Daksha Savarni. Tenth one is Brahma Savarni. Eleventh one is Dharma Savarni. Twelfth uh, is Rudra Putra Savarni. Thirteenth is uh, Deva Savarni. And fourteenth is Indra Savarni. So those are the names of one set of fourteen uh, Manu covering uh, the the. Uh, 4 billion, 300 million, uh, thousand uh, solar years as described above. So far, so good. Shall we move on? Yes, Prabhu, I just have a question, Prabhu. Yeah. Uh, you just mentioned about uh, the sons, uh, the children of sun god. Uh, so, 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 because I understand that uh, there were two children of sun god. There's one is uh, Lord Yamraj and other one is uh, Shani Dev. So, are they were they his sons in some other kalpa or something? Is that what you want to say? Yes, yes, you're right, too. Yes, okay, you're right. So, let's let's understand a little bit more about the teachings of Manu. So having described uh, the situations of Supreme Personality of Godhead as transcendental Swambhu Manu for the instruction of the sons and grandsons in his dynasty, he described all the property of the universe belong to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That was the main essence of his teaching, that everything belongs to Supreme Personality of Godhead. Manu's instructions are not only for his, this particular teachings are basically for his sons and grandsons, but also for the human society, especially for us. So the the Swamu so Manu instructs that whatever exists not only in the spiritual world but even within the material world is the property of Supreme Personality of God, Godhead, who is present everywhere as the super consciousness, as confirmed in Bhagavad Gita. Uh, in it says in other uh, it, it says the super the, the Supreme Lord is existing as the super soul. The individual soul is given a body in which uh, to live and I act according to the instructions of the Supreme Person. And therefore, the Supreme Person also exists within everybody. So we should not think that we are independent. Rather, we should understand that we are allotted a certain portion of the total property of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. 
Now, one should learn from the Vedic literature that one's body is also not the property of individual soul, but it's given to the individual soul according to his karma. Uh, definitely, we can discuss a little bit more about this uh, when, when Mataji and Prabhuji will be taking the class on Bhagavad Gita and, and they will discuss about the three modes of material nature and how it works and so on. So everything belongs to Supreme. And therefore, one should not try to grasp another's property. We have a tendency to manufacture many things, especially nowadays we are building skyscrapers and developing other many material facilities. We should know, however, that the ingredients of the skyscrapers and machines cannot be manufactured by anyone, but the Supreme Person have got it. Moving forward, uh, one may, one may claim a proprietorship to as much wealth as required to maintain body and soul together. But one who desires proprietorship or more than that must be considered a thief and he deserves to be punished by the laws of nature. So this, these, these were few of the teachings of uh, Manu. I did not want you to take uh, uh, many because of the time constraints. Last but not least, uh, I'm sure we all, you all must have heard about Manu Samhita. Have you heard about this term called Manu Samhita or Manu Smriti? Yes, Prabhu. What is it? It's the principle, uh, the book of principles of Swambhu Manu itself. Fantastic. Amit Prabhu, I think next time you should take class. <laughs> Dandor Pranam Prabhu, sorry, thank you. <laughs> no, no, very nice, very good. I, I like your understanding, very nice. So, um, are these laws uh, been been treasured in the books or they have been practiced? And were they practiced in past or are they, are, are they practiced in today's world as well? Sorry, Prabhu, I didn't understand. My question was, the, you, you just mentioned uh, the, is the Dharma Shastra. The rule book. Yeah, Dharma Shastra, yes. So this, this particular Dharma Shastra is, uh, was shastras that was all always uh, was residing only in the books, or they were practiced in past, or are they practiced in today's world? Today's world, of course not. I don't think so. But in the previous, yes, they were practiced uh, to to so that the man lives within his limits and uh, and you know he, he, he and and reaches the ultimate uh, goal that is Lord Krishna. Super, very good. Uh, just to give you a little understanding, I, I did a little research uh, before uh, compiling the notes of this class. I, there, there were few scriptures and a few uh, shastras are, are injected in today's constitution of India. So the, that's, that's, they have taken, the, the, the backbone of the constitution of India was based on the Dharma Shastra that was taken from Manu Samhita. <clears throat> so the Dharma Shastra include the uh, the law codes of Hinduism, and I believe you all know Hinduism is not a religion; it's a way of life, both secular and religious, since both uh, were very much inseparable. So they they deal with the three main subjects: code of conduct, like we all have code of conduct when we uh, when we get in our induction done. In, in any new organization, we get a code of conduct of the organization. Similarly, for a humankind, we have a code of conduct. Uh, so, uh, so this particular Samhita has three main subjects, code of conduct, civil and criminal law, and punishment and atonement. So most important is the Manusa Smriti or Samhita still consulted in Indian law, as I mentioned. It was written by Manu as administrative demigod, the ruler of mankind, and the first lawgiver. The were uh, again. There are there are fourteen manus. We all all know. There are two thousand seven hundred verses divided in twelve chapters. Most scholars claim that it is written between three hundred. Uh, it, it was it was written in in a very small period of time. Uh, important dharma texts were written by uh, Parashur Muni as well as Narad Muni, uh, which was added in this particular. Uh, Dharma Shastra. The Manu Smriti establishes the Hindu way of life. It, it specifically outlines the duties of four Varnas, four Ashramas. Anybody knows what are the four Ashramas? 
is it the 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 brahma uh, brahman kshatri no sorry. yes 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 you are right you are right brahman, yeah, brahman kshatriya brahman kshatriya vaishnava vaishnava and shudra very good very good prabhu uh, so it extols the virtues of the brahmanas but clearly states the varna divisions are based on individual merit and capacity rather than birth right so it means that uh, if if somebody is taking a birth in 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 the brahman family he doesn't become a brahmana like someone who is taking the birth in the doctor's family he doesn't become a doctor automatically he has to go through a certain um, you know a certain understanding again he has to gain that capacity and potency to become a brahmana or to become a doctor so the text all so are we talking about brahma uh, the uh, manusra samhita the the text also deals with rules of inheritance and adoption and with law and the signs of government like uh, i like to read one of the passage uh, from uh, from manu samhita it is from 2.215 so just to give you a taste of what exactly it has it says the man the man should <clears throat> the the man should not associate with a woman in a solitary place not even with his mother sister or daughter for the senses Uh, for the senses are so strong that they lead astray even a person at once in knowledge this is from uh, from manusramita chapter 2 to uh, verse number 2.215 there are other related values and issues that was uh, addressed in manusramita and that was citizenship crime and punishment capital punishment morality rights and responsibilities uh righteous war or chivalry equal opportunities so all this information was mentioned in manu samhita so we talked about uh, the the birth of uh, swayambhu manu we talked about the family uh, tree of swayambhu manu we also talked about a little bit uh, on what was the teaching of manu we talked about uh, what was his lifestyle we talked about uh again his uh, his uh, samhita which is uh, manu samhita and uh, how how that samhita is more powerful and in case if you really want to lead a very very auspicious life we can definitely uh, use manu samhita we can also follow the teachings of uh, swayambhu manu so these were my understanding which i have uh, which i have gathered and compiled for the pleasure of uh, uh, listeners and uh, in case if you have any questions you can please uh, let me know i i was given uh, uh, one hour and i thought of just keeping four minutes for the question answer session and in case if you want like to add any thoughts uh, from your end as i mentioned to you you all are scholarly people uh, i'll be very very grateful to you if you can add some more thoughts and comments that i can take uh, this uh, as a take away Uh, from this particular session and in case if you have any questions uh, i will uh, i will i will request uh, i will request i will i'll request uh, my mother and father uh, to also guide me in answering these questions as my father guided me in some in some places thank you very much hari krishna vaibhav prabhu muttu here hari krishna <laughs> yeah uh, the question is in kali yuga say uh, like in all the uh, all the places like ashuras and ashuras were always uh, uh, fighting against uh, brahmanas devatas where a lord has to come and uh, show his presence uh -huh. so in kali yuga are ashuras there or is it there, there or in which form they are there i am sorry uh, your voice is breaking prabhu i am not able to hear your question well if you can kindly repeat i will be grateful to you uh like in kali yuga if asuras are there in which form they are there because in every this thing asuras were always fighting against yes uh, devas and then uh, brahmanas that's the real, then god has come in existence to prove uh, or to show uh, like his presence is there to save always uh, uh, or to reinstate the world, uh, reinstate everything so in uh, kali yuga 
are asuras there and how to identify asuras in kali yuga mm. thank you very much for the question prabhu uh, with uh, when i propose the uh, um, permission may i answer the question no oh, please okay so in every yuga uh, there is a place that has been given to demons or asuras like like in satya yuga uh, the there was a different uh, different planet that was given uh, to asuras and devatas in uh, in let's say about from, from the mahabharata point of view the asuras was given place in the same family so in the same family there were there were asuras and there was their devgans like for example i can give you an example of duryodhana and pandavas okay. now uh, coming back to the uh, your question about kaliyuga kaliyuga is such a such an amazing uh, yuga where you can find the asura and dev one human being in a one human being you will find asura and and dev now let me explain to you how this is this, that's what that's that's the reason i sometime back i, I mentioned to you that it depends upon the three modes of material nature so when you are in a, in a in a mode of there are three modes of material nature one is mode of uh, first one is uh, the mode of goodness second one is the mode of uh, passion and the third one is the mode of ignorance people who are in mode of goodness they always are very calm they always have a lot of patience they always do lot of sattva they are always in a, they always make sure that they they follow the righteous nature people who are in a, uh, in in mode of passion they are always they are like kshatriyas ready to fight ready to move forward ready to always hit the target and so on but when it comes to mo- a mode of ignorance uh, this people they don't they they are like asuras they have a mentality like asuras you know they uh, they will never uh, do good to people they always have a lot of jealousies lot of envy lot of false egos and all these are are the qualities of asuras so, so prabhu if, if you really you want to find that the uh, asuras uh, are living together uh, in this yuga uh, near to us around us everywhere yes. and then everywhere. Uh, we don't even identify that they are asuras and but they are living around us they are absolutely right that is that is the right understanding and that is the reason it is called as a material world where uh, where this is like a jail the reason we have got this material world and the reason we are got on the uh, on this particular planet earth because this planet earth is nothing but it's a jail and if we uh, and i'm sure uh, prabhuji and mataji in, in in their previous classes must have really mentioned that we have to get out from this material world how do we get out from this material world by making sure that we uh, by following by doing a yajna sankirtana yajna every time and what is sankirtana yajna sankirtana yajna is always 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 chanting the holy name of lord krishna which is hare krishna hare krishna krishna krishna, 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 krishna hare krishna, hare hare krishna, hare 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 rama hare rama hare rama hare rama, 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 rama so that's my understanding and i would i would request uh, vinay prabhu to kindly add uh, Uh, Prabhu, you have given an excellent uh, explanation. I don't think I need to add anything further. However, uh, to what Mr. Prabhu is saying, so in our day to day, I I I was hearing one of the lecture wherein it was said that uh, whoever is not a devotee is also to be considered as an asura. That's one. And secondly, within our within our own body, our mind is also an asura. so this asura needs to be controlled every the, the the moment we wake up in the morning this asura is needs to be controlled so you know and how this asura, and we have to convert this asura into a devotee how the process what just now uh, vibhav prabhu was explaining by chanting every day uh, so chant, 
chanting really helps and then to enhance the chanting what we have to also do is take the association of the devotees uh, honor prashadam then read uh, the the scriptures and most importantly is the association that's what we need to do thank you prabhu so among uh, as as mentioned by uh, vinay prabhu um, we have to make sure that we create an uh, surrounding an environment among around us which is very spiritual not only us also uh, for our children for our uh, family members so that we can turn we can we can definitely uh, transfer the the surrounding from a material platform to a spiritual platform and uh, his divine grace uh, jagadguru uh, shila prabhupad always mentioned that in case, if you really want to see vaikuntha come to iskon and you can see a vaikuntha over there vaikuntha what is kuntha kuntha is stress and vaikuntha means a place where there is no stress so if you really want to become happy all the time you have to have a the almighty with you and the only way of, of of having him around us as rightly mentioned by vinay prabhu is always thinking about him glorifying him and always being association uh, of devotees and that is the only reason the series the 12 mahajan series is nothing but is a is a is a wonderful platform for us to understand how can we how can we become pure we can become pure by only following the path of this 12 mahajan i hope uh, i was able to answer your question with actually uh, 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 a very good explanation given to vinod prabhu uh, yes actually the, the uh, i am con- totally convinced thank you very much hari krishna and pram thank you prabhu so vinay prabhu thank you so very much and rest of the uh, listeners thank you so very much for giving me an opportunity i would not like to take much of your valuable time it's already uh, 8:5 uh, if you don't have any questions so i would like to take uh, your blessing thank you prabhu ji thank you nice thank you thank you fellow very nice thank you prabhu ji thank you mata ji oh. hari krishna i am still under a shock my little boy has grown i thought he will speak some words and say mama dad i am done <laughs> and i see you know so uh, thank you so much prabhu thank you so much uh, may you get all the mercy and lot of blessings of your guru and you may you progress along with your uh, better half and your children thank you once again on behalf of everybody it was an excellent class thanks for the Just opportunity to talk to talk about swambhu manu uh, really you know you need to you need to dig so much because he was the first man